Hey there, this is Rod Rogers, and this just goes to show you how what you think is just going to be a normal flight. Uh, I gave some a uh, little bit of a commercial license instructor. I'm a CFI double I and MEI to a friend, and I'm heading back from DeKalb, but it's just going to be a nice little return flight. I've already done the uh, uh, most of the engine checks there, so it's uh, kind of an abbreviated departure. And uh, I uh, was going to do a, a, a long cross country, so I was filling up all the fuel tanks. Now, uh, this aircraft has has uh, two tip tanks. Um, Cessna calls those the main tanks. They hold 50 gallons each. It's got two aux tanks that hold 33 gallons each, and then it has two wing locker tanks that hold 20 gallons each. Now, the, uh, I decided, okay, I just uh, fueled it up, and I'm ready uh, to depart. So I got all full tanks. Everything's looking good. Now, uh, I haven't flown cross country in this in a while, and I thought I'd kept fuel in those wing locker tanks because the deal is if you don't keep fuel in there, they can kind of rot out on you. And I think that's what's happened here because everything seemed to be fine. And I'm just doing a quick little trip back from DeKalb to uh, Lake in the Hills that isn't a, a very great distance at all. So I got my 205 gallons, which is plenty of fuel to get back from DeKalb to uh, Lake in the Hills, and I'm going to have it. They had a better price down here, so I'm ready to depart. Now, uh, it was halfway through the flight. I'm halfway to Lake in the Hills when things started to get really interesting because I started to smell raw fuel, and that is never a good thing. Um, yeah. And that's when I looked out the nacelles and I saw fuel just streaming out from underneath. And of course, the nacelles are behind the engine, the hot engine, the uh, turbocharger back there. And I'm going, this is not a good thing. Well, Lake in the Hills is my closest place, so I go there fast. You can even see when I use speed brakes on the descent. And uh, I got it in and landed, and uh, I called ahead for the mechanics to come out with some buckets because... I think it was, uh, you know, probably going to continue to leak on the ground, so I wanted to get, uh, you know, this stuff picked up, as it were. Uh, which way are you going there, uh, Lufkin? Right where you are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll just take the ground. That works. I got a Great Lakes. <laughs> nice. I like grass in it. All right. Uh, here's a crossing the uh, threshold here, uh, runway 27. That was my coordination, whatever. Uh, let's get back home. Okay, what do we got? We got pumps, fuel pumps. Well, I got everything going. Decal traffic, twin test November 213, Mike is departing runway 02, northeast departure. Decal traffic, arrow 33804, five miles mile from 2, uh, Decal. Right away we go.
All right, two good engines, 93, 92. Scott Travis, 418, Tango Julia, from the ramp to runway 02, Scott. Gear up. Now I was hoping in this video, uh, you can see the end of the nacelle there at the far left end of the frame. Uh, I w now, now the one on the right uh, didn't leak much at all. Uh, it holds 20 gallons, it had 15 uh, when we emptied it. The other one was virtually empty, so it was leaking on the left side. Uh, it wasn't a mist or anything, it was, it was more just streaming fuel once I realized what was going on, once I smelled the raw fuel inside uh, the cabin, which is, uh, it, apparently it just, it leaks and it drains all through the place, so I was getting fuel all through the, uh, the spar and stuff, I guess, and it was coming up into the cabin, that's just not a smell you really, you really want, because it's not, it's, it's not a good smell. Scalp Trap, zero three three eight zero four, two mile final for runway two. Scalp. And it's a really nice day to fly, you know. Other than uh, having the massive fuel leak, and I'm worried the airplane's going to catch on fire, you know. Other than that, uh, Mrs. Lincoln, how'd you like to play? And I, I could shorten up, I mean, it's not a long trip uh, between the two places, and I could shorten it up, but I've had some people suggest, no, we kind of like to see it in real time. So, uh, you know, if you want, you can fast forward uh, for those who want to see it in real time. That's what we're doing here. We're only talking 23 miles between DeKalb and, and Lake in the Hills, and of course this airplane cruises at about 180, so um, of course I'm at a lower altitude, so it's not cruising right that fast, but you know, uh, covering uh, that short distance of the, you know, the 23 miles doesn't take a whole lot of time.
Good American 2460, level 230. I got a bad fuel leak. Okay, I had to delete a few uh, expletives there uh, once I noticed it, and for the sake of the audience, those have been uh, removed, but uh, I had a little bit of an interrogative when I looked out there after I had the smell, and I noticed just the fuel just pouring out. I'm going to have a fire here if I'm not careful. I guess the microphone didn't pick it up, but I pulled out my cell phone. I know you're not supposed to use the cell phones in the air, but I was low enough uh, that I knew I could get coverage, and I called uh, my maintenance shop there at Lake in the Hills, and I said, hey, uh, if you guys could get ready with a couple of buckets, because I'm going to pull this thing in, and I'm sure it's going to keep on leaking if it, if it doesn't go all the way out, but uh, it, was, uh, it was still leaking, so I figured we might need some buckets, and uh, uh, I got a little bit of video on that if I can... Uh, put that in here properly when uh, once set, uh, I get to the end here. Lakes November <laughs> Twin Sets November 213 Mike I am five miles out on runway 8 uh, coming straight in fortunately there was nobody in the traffic pattern otherwise I would have had to request priority but uh, there was nobody there so it worked out great So I kept it going fast because I have speed brakes on this airplane, which is kind of interesting. Speed brakes on a 310. Uh, previous guy put them on and they work quite effectively. So I could come in at high speed, uh, relatively, and slow it down, get the gear and flaps, and uh, come in for landing.
And there you can see the speed brakes uh, come up in the uh, left side of the picture there. And that's the gear warning horn because I pulled the power back and I haven't put the gear down. And there comes the gear. Lincoln Hills driving Great Lakes Driver, 727 Kilo Romeo is one mile, final runway 08, Lincoln Hills. Okay, coming in short final, got everything, hope that fuel leak isn't too bad. Get my airspeed under control, use the speed brakes to slow down, came in fast, here we go. Yeah, center carriage, mixture prop, we're ready. Okay, so slowing down and I'm going to take the exit that gets me uh, quickest uh, to the shop so they can get the buckets out. And like I said, I recalled them. And uh, yes, I went back and I looked at the timing to make sure that I was truly closest to um, Lake in the Hills. And I was pretty much eh, midpoint at least. Uh, you know, you always wonder uh, the nice thing about having video and audio. You can go back and second guess your own self, as I'm sure a lot of people do on this stuff. And there may be some comments on uh, that. This looked like the most decent uh, airport. Um, there might have been um, the landings that I could have landed at. Uh, it might have been quicker. But um, uh, I was kind of focused in on getting it to Lake in the Hills. So I neglected to consider that possible. Of course, one other thing about the landings is there's just absolutely nobody there if I needed any sort of help. Uh, fire extinguishers or anything like that. Now we don't have crash fire rescue here at Lake in the Hills uh, other than uh, the guys in the shop could have been uh, come out with the fire extinguishers and I got fire extinguishers in my hand. Well, well, so it's a bit away, so it's, well it's 200 feet behind me there for the uh, Great Lakes but uh, at least I've got a little more support here and if necessary I could have uh, thought it was necessary I could have gotten the uh, crash fire rescue of uh, Crystal Lake or Lake in the Hills to come out, but I brought it in, shut it down. You can already see him coming out there with the uh, with the buckets. And time to shut everything down and get out of the aircraft. Oh, like a transfer hose or something? Something. Well, and the other side's leaking a little bit too. I haven't used these uh, aux tanks in a long time. Well, wonder if the bladders are bad then. Yeah. They've been sitting dry. Yeah. Well, I tried to keep a little bit in, but uh, I may have run them dry. So as you can see, this is how I ended up. Uh, uh, fuel dripping out and uh, thank goodness I didn't have hot brakes because that whole uh, gear and wheel assembly is hot. So I got kind of uh, lucky here that I safely got this thing back on the ground. Where's the cap? Right there, yeah. Yeah, reaches better from the other side. <laughs> Much in there? It doesn't look like it. <laughs> no, there's not much left. Oh gosh. So that is my fun saga of the ruptured bladder tank. Thanks for watching. No, it's about empty. <laughs> there's not enough to even try safe. Safe my dial.